Assalamu alaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn about development of enterprise application. We're going to cover three subtopics. First, EE architecture, followed by EE pattern, and then we focus on MVC, model view controller. So let's recap about our EE architecture. Today, more and more developers want to write distributed transactional application for the enterprise and leverage the speed, security, and reliability of server-side technology. If you are already working in this area, you know that in today's fast-moving and demanding world of e-commerce and information technology, enterprise applications have to be designed, built, and produced for less money, faster, with fewer resources than ever before. To reduce cost and fast-track enterprise application design development, the Java platform, which is Java EE, technology provides a component-based approach to design, develop, assembly, and deploy of enterprise application. The Java EE platform gives you a multi-tiered distributed application model the ability to reuse component, a unified security model, and a flexible transaction control. Figure here shows the various elements that can make up the client tier, and then the client will communicate with the business tier in the Java EE server, whether it's directly or in the case of a client running in a browser by going through GSP, servlet, and also running in the Web container for EGB. So it will directly also connect to the database tier, which is the data tier. Next, let's recap back few components of Java EE. EE server is the runtime portion of a Java EE product. So it is a server that provides EGB and web container. EE Server provides EJB and web container that manage the execution of enterprise pin for EE application, whereas web container manage the execution of JSP, servlet, and Java EE server phases. Application client container manage the execution of application client component. Now let's take a look of Java EE tier. So as we know that. Java EE application are made up of components. A Java EE component is a self-contained functional software unit that is assembled into a Java EE application with its related classes and files and communicates with other components. So in the EE specification, we have about three main components. The first one is the client components. And then the second one is the web components. And then the third one is the business components. So EE components are written in a Java programming language and compiled in the same way as any Java programming language program. The difference when you work with the Java EE platform is the Java EE components are assembled into EE application verify that they are well performed, well formed and in compliance with the Java EE specification and deployed to production where they are run and managed by the EE server. Right, let's move on to design pattern. What is design pattern? So a design pattern is a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design. A design pattern is not a finished design that can be transformed directly into code. It is a description or a template for how to solve a problem that can be used in many different situations. Object-oriented design patterns typically show relationship and interaction between classes and objects without specifying the final application class or object they are involved. In Java EE, we do have many design patterns. Let's take a look of some of Java EE design patterns. So this is the first Java EE design pattern that we're going to discuss named DAO, Data Access Object. It is used to separate low-level data assessing API 
or operation from high-level business services. Code that depends on specific features of data resources ties together business logic with data access logic. This will make it difficult to replace or modify an application's data resources. So that's why this pattern separates a data resource client interface from its data access mechanism. It adapts a specific data resource access API to a generic client interface. It allows data access mechanism to change independently of the code that uses the data. In this figure, we can see that it's a class diagram that represents the relationship for the DAO pattern. So we do have a business object here that represents the data client. And then we do have a data access object that it is an abstract, the underlying data access implementation for the business object to enable transparent access to the data source. So it contains the crude method which is create, read, update, and delete. We do have a data source here that represents a data source implementation. And lastly, we do have a transfer object class that represents a data carrier, um, which is a DAO that may use it to return to the client. Right, let's take a look to another Java EE design pattern, which is Model View Controller or MVC. MVC is a software design pattern that decouples various concerns in application. In principle, the application logic or controller is separated from the technology used to display information to the user or the view layer. The model is a communication vehicle between the controller and view layers. It is a powerful and effective way of designing application that separates the UI which is user interface logic from the data access and the data manipulation logic. It explicit separation of concern and adds some extra complexity to an application design but it provides enormous benefits to the application stability, functionality and also testability. Right, MVC also separates an application into the three main aspects. So the first one, as I said just now, model that contains a set of classes which are basically the data with the business logic and rules that describe how the data can be manipulated. Second view, it defines the UI of the application. In other words, it's the representation of the data that the model contains. Lastly, controller which is a set of classes that handle user input and acts upon the model to generate the required view. So you can see in the figure, the, this is a typical design pattern for MVC. So the end user will interact with the view which is basically the UI layer upon the user action for example, user click any button or mouse hover event, the view invokes corresponding to controller. So the controller then determines the model and update it as per the requirement. Once the model is updated, then the controller will generate the view and update it for the end user. Now, let's take a look at an example application using MVC design pattern. In this example, servlet will act as a controller, JSP act as a view component and Java bin class as a model. So basically, there are five pages need to be created. Index.jsp, controller servlet, login bin and login success and login error. So let's take a look at the overview of the application. So this is basically the overview of the application. So you do have an index.jsp, the first one that contains username and password. And then when after you fill up the um, value for the username and password, you click on submit button, the login success.jsp will display the successful login page. 
Alright, let's take a look of the first page which is view component. So this is a form that contains username and password, field and then you have a submit button. And this form will be submitted to controller servlet, servlet to a method post. Now let's take a look at controller component. So in this um, slide, we can see that it is a servlet class named controller servlet that extends HTTP servlet. In the do post method, we retrieve the value from the form from the view component by using the request.get parameter method and then after that we create a bin we create an object using the login bin so this is referring to a model component which is name is login bin and then in this bin we call the set and get method all right for us to set the username that have been retrieved from the because of get parameter method. After that, we check whether is it being validated. If yes, successful, so we will we will dispatch this server to the login success to GSP. If fail, then we will dispatch this server to the login error dot GSP. Next, let's take a look at the model component, which is the login bin. So this is basically a normal Java bin class that have the constructor and then it have a get and set method. Next is the view component, another view component that for displaying the successful login page. So after the user have been logged and been validated, so this page will be displayed to the user. So basically it still calling the bin to get the bin name and then it print out the username of the object which is the user that have been logging. Alright, that's all for now. Let's read chapter 7 for more details on example for the chapter development of enterprise application. Thank you.